Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, May 1st, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Vintage Length, episode number 646. And that was a perfect intro again. And happy May Day! Anybody getting any baskets? Anybody get anybody baskets? Do that where they where 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 you would like create like a little basket and then you put it at someone's door and ding dong get them. And then apparently there was a, a thing where uh, if you chased after after them and you you successfully like kiss them, uh, you get good luck or something like that. I don't remember that. All I remember was uh, uh, when. One year, uh, some of the neighbors up the street put some baskets in front of her door, ding dong, and I burst out the out and chased after him and kissed the the uh, one of the girls. I don't remember. Where so, was. I have was. no idea what you're talking about. Mayday! <laughs> Did you not have Mayday tradition? The, the, like the Mayday celebration, like Mayday baskets. Mm-mm. I think that's a okay, Minnesota quick, thing. Quick side, quick, quick side there. <laughs> Mayday baskets. Uh-oh. Yeah, Mayday baskets. Mayday. Okay. What is this thing? <laughs> in some communities, hanging a Mayday basket on someone's door with a chance to express romantic interest. The basket hanger was espied by the recipient. The recipient would give chase and try to steal a kiss from the basket hanger. So that's wonderful. Don't recall ever doing that. Well, Gary, us, all, all <laughs> us wholesome Midwesterners, right? Well, right. So <clears throat> May Day, uh, usually celebrated on May first, according to Wikipedia, is a European festival of ancient origins, marking the beginning of summer. And there's a whole lot of stuff that goes with it, including a maypole, the way you dress, other mm-hmm. things. Um, but no, in my region, May Day was not necessarily a thing when I grew up because the only basket I got is the one that I was blessed with that I came into the world. <laughs> but a bunch. That's it. Ah ha ha ha. You made a joke and pun about genitalia. <laughs> Thanks, Mom, for explaining the joke. Shall we continue? So uh, we were returned to office, and immediately oh. when we returned to office, I had I had students. Ah, ended up being a clusterfuck. Uh, 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 one of the students ended up having uh, gay drama at home, and ended up being. Uh, afraid to leave his house so he had to then join virtually and work from home for a week uh wait and such what <laughs> okay okay you're just gonna be quiet okay fine okay. <laughs> Let, let's just say this for confidentiality's sake he could probably not discuss it further if i was to no, imagine let, let, let me just and extrapolate i would say there was potentially a domestic violence concern 
yeah. or something along those lines. And therefore, I, I did not dig. I was like, "Fuck, this is gay drama." I'm stepping back. I'd be like, "Okay, it, that's what I sure be. okay." I just want you to be safe. Whatever. Uh, I don't want to touch it. Unlike most gays, I am uh, allergic to drama. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, mm. uh, it just keep going. <laughs> Anyways, um, had uh, a week of uh, I had a week off of training so I could work on a project I was meeting to to put together, which is, folks, let me tell you something. If you want training material, oh boy, don't just turn the process manual into a slide deck. That is not training material. <laughs> I just preach. I, pre <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's kind of what we had to begin with. So I'm like, you know, uh -huh. there, there are some things that were good. There were some things that were okay. Um, but when the training material goes in, like has this complete blurb about one of our things, which just me reading it, I'm like, I am so confused. I know what this means. I understand the concept. I can understand all that. But anytime that I would possibly put up this slide, I'm going to say, Okay, this is what it has in the manual, but here's what it means. I'm not going to read a word of this because all it's going to do is confuse you. And I could probably say it in much less words. Wow. It reminds me of when I used to teach singular wireless. That <laughs> This goes to show you how long ago this was. Uh oh. And we had to discuss prorating. And describing what a prorated bill was like for a partial month and how that worked and mm. how people would get, unfortunately, financially screwed, um, depending on like Maybe start or end within a month. Oh, yeah. A whole bunch of different stuff. So, yeah. But but yeah. I hear you, Jeff, because it's like like they whatever they provide, you're like, OK, mama, this is a plate of spaghetti. This is a mess. <laughs> like we're, we're just going to kind of avoid that. going to. We're going to break it down, make it easier. So, so the whole thing is, is, uh, and, and plus the way the process manual is structured is not, uh, um, the, the order of the, the, the structure and the, of the process manual is not conducive for doing a kind of a, you learn this before you learn this before you learn this. But then they group a whole bunch of things which are related, but like one is 101. The next part is like 102. Then and the next part is like like 201. It's like oh. I'm not even gonna talk about this in my class. Because mm. my job isn't to give you all the advanced features or the advanced stuff regarding it. That's something you learn when you're on the floor. That's 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 what you learn from other agents as you, you advance up and become better at the job. You know, step one, I'm just going to give you the basics. I'm, my class is 101. It's all I all right, you go. You go into nesting. You're going to get a little bit more. And then once you get on the floor, you're going to start off with basically what you were doing in nesting, except instead of having somebody looking over your shoulder all the time, um, you're going to be kind of on your own, expected to do your job, hopefully amazingly by yourself and then eventually they'll give you some additional things as you as your quality is good and etc and move you up and you learn things as you go mm -hmm. so kind to so i've been trying to make an order and being like okay these concepts need to go with this part too because they'll have like this one one thing which is affected for this other thing thing but they're like two very different parts of the manual so my my project was that of course i end up getting a lot with like writer's block how am i going to illustrate this where types of screenshots hey is there 
is there a, a thing happening that I could take a screenshot for? No, it's not until like Wednesday. So I have to wait till Wednesday to even get a screenshot for what I want. And then how my mind works. It's like, I can only do one slide at a time. I can't like put a bunch of slides together and then go back. I have to like get this one right before I go into the next one. That's just my weird little, I don't know, OCD. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. really the case. Wow. A uh, process for doing it. So it's not done, but you know what? It's fine. Um, I haven't been using this deck uh, for it's... the past six, seven months, however long I've been doing this. So, uh, but uh, it's a work in progress. There really mm -hmm. is no timeline. I'm doing this because I want to, not because I have to. So. <laughs> I hear you. Like that. that's just, it's the way I've always worked. People mm. would be like, invariably sometimes my bosses are like why did you do that i was like because it makes it better and then when they kind of see it and then especially in context they're like oh that's really good i know i made it <laughs> it's like <laughs> well here, here's the here's well, the no, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> this is okay this is gonna sorry jeff. Did deck for this one new thing that's happening and it's like hey jeff can you make a deck for this and i'm like sure I put the deck together. They need me. Uh, somebody a new process comes out. Hey, we need somebody to help us out with the manual. And it's like, okay, cool. Show me the process. Okay, take notes. I, and I go. I'll throw together the manual. I'm sure it's not going to be complete. You can add to it later, but I'll at least have the structure for you. Right. That's what I do. Uh, manage basically manage process manuals and and training materials. Uh, and so that was, that's part of my job in the training department. So I'm basically doing what my job is telling me to for that. So I had a week mm. to do that. It's definitely not nowhere near completion. I may be 40%, 30%. I don't know. I, I really don't know how far I am because I don't know how many slides I like. I got already got like 50 some slides, I think. That I've already created this. It's supposed to be a deck that's used over the entire course of the tra their training with me anyway. So it's not like I'm not doing multiple decks for different parts or something. Just one big mm. deck. It gives me structure, timeline. This is what I need. This is I'm doing this because I need it, not because I have to or need or need to, but I mm. need it for myself. Uh otherwise, because frequently when I've been been doing my set of training i end up jumping all over the place and being like oh what do i do next i'm not sure so i need that more of that just a little bit of structure i know i'm probably not this month so uh i was having fun with the newfound adventure just streamed earlier today uh the uh, main scenario and part of the uh 24 man alliance raid um so uh although i had some streaming issues for the first part but uh, fix that for the second part. Should be up mm. eventually when I finally export it from Twitch. Uh, but that's it. That's that's me. Damon. Cool. Um. So the first thing, um, after three, two, three months of waiting. Um, I finally have my CPAP machine. Um, so for those that don't know or are in the know, um, there has been a national, international, whatever, um, delay with regarding to um, CPAP machines. Um, they are, there was a recall on some ma a major one in, you know, during the pandemic. And then with ship with um, you know shipping delays and everything with uh, parts and such, everything else was delayed even further. So I got I ordered my my mine was ordered in January, and I officially got it earlier in April, and I finally um, uh, was able to start using it. We'll see how this goes. Um, I technically, I think I have to use it for like 30, 90 days or so um, for insurance to be okay with it. 
Mm-hmm. So that part. Um, and this weekend was a lot of shit with the chorus. <laughs> um, so on Friday, we had a uh, paid gig performance with the Cincinnati Women's Club. Uh, we did some stuff from our spring concert, and the audience was amazing. The space is lovely. Um, it's a very interesting uh, experiment in, um, like, these are people with a lot of money, and they want to do things, so let's do it. Um, and again, they were, it was, it was, we were very appreciative. They were very appreciative and the event overall was, um, a success. Um, on Friday, on Saturday, uh, I spent most of the day getting ready for the, um, our annual cabaret, which we were doing live for the first time in two years. Um, I performed in it. I sang a song um, that I did during the NAB contest when I proposed to Jim, uh, Marry Me a Little from Son- um, Company, um, and got to tell that story as part of the cabaret. So it was very um, It's been a while <laughs> since I've gotten in face. Um, I need to remember that it takes me a while. And I thought giving myself 90 minutes would be enough. It was not. Mm. Um, (laughs) um, But I got ready and they, you know, they're the people who are here to record it were patient with me. Um, Fortunately, everything was being done here at the house. I'm so happy we were able to do that because I don't know what I would have done if we had to transport shit everywhere. But it went really well. um, And it's going to be a really fun promotion for our upcoming concert. The... um, God Save the Dancing Queens is the name of the um, concert. And it's our pride concert slash big gay sing. So the audience will get to sing along with what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, Great, 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 great fun times. Fun, fun. Yeah. And I can't wait for this to grow back because I don't like the way this looks. Um, I know I didn't have a lot. I mean, I know I didn't have a lot of facial hair, but. When it's gone, I mean, you still look good. Oh well, thank you. It's, it's just it, you know, <laughs> preference of having the facial hair. That's all. Yes, I have a preference for having. It. So, what you've noticed is that the flavor saver is missing. So, yeah, well, not so much the flavor saver. <laughs> <laughs> Most stuff gets in my mouth and stays there. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know, like the past, it's been like the past, not the whole month of April, but maybe most of it. I just haven't been feeling like myself, but there's nothing wrong. It's not COVID. Blah, blah, blah. So anyways, um, busy with work, you know, chalk it along, trying to keep things moving. But yeah, but spring also means wacky weather. So, Mm -hmm. you know. 75 81 degree day three days later two inches of snow (laughs) like it's just you know it's annoying to say the least um just as well just this friday they had to cancel the walk that they had planned because um it the whole month has been a whole walking program promotion across the entire city so like all the employers created teams and mm. they're competing it's a thing they've done every year but they didn't do it the past two years because of covid so now it's back and uh anyways they were going to do a walk on three times a week they're doing walks at our location for our team to get their 30 minutes in anyways they had to cancel on friday because of the inclement weather you know it snowed sleet oh matter of fact. Oh yeah. So wasn't wasn't pleasant. What's the snow uh, had referred to? <laughs> you know about it. You're from Minnesota. Um, <laughs> I haven't been I there just, in over ten years. <laughs> I just know, like, I agree with you about this weather. So this week alone, no, our the last couple. So tomorrow, when I go back to work, we will officially have AC. So the entire county 
the end of April converts all the HVACs from yeah. heat to AC. Ah, because we have older antiquated buildings. So last week they were cleaning out all the AC units because um, there's multiples of them uh, and all this stuff. And they were doing that <laughs> on an 81 degree day. Oh, so man. it was a little um, humid in the building. Like, <laughs> you know, it's bad when you walk outside and it, the air is better on the outside than it is on the inside of the building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, but it was comical because I was like, oh, yeah, it is a little awkward in the building. Like, I'm in my office and I was like, my desk is, like, wet. the only way I could say is, like, sticky. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, how humidity yeah. gets it. You're just kind of like, ugh. So, like, it wasn't real bad. It was just slightly noticeable. So, um, but I was amused because then someone commented, like, this week, the first week of May coming up is when all that stuff, will, you know, the AC will be on or whatever. So I was highly mm. amused. I was like, oh, just not soon enough. But then again, on Friday, it's no sleeted. So, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> There's that. Yeah. All right. And with that, uh, I think it's time for this. She's back, baby, in her appropriate place. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Did you not hear? I well, it got garbled for me. Are we okay? Yeah, we're yeah. we're fine. Everything seems okay. fine on my end, at least. All right. <laughs> that was the wa that was the worst D stub version of like of dubstep first of Janet I've ever heard. Anyways. <laughs> uh so for feedback this month, we would like to thank the following people on Facebook for liking us. Uh TK, Xavier Champion, Phil Onyx, Zachary Wilburn, Cal Valmar Jackson. And Yusef Juan or Yusef Juan, Yusef? not sure which. Mm -hmm. Mr. Damon, I think we have a comment over in the YouTube lands. We do. So from um, COL 643, which was our Let's Talk About Food childhood cereals, Owen commented, wow, y'all went off on Captain Crunch. That was my primary cereal growing up. <laughs> So, <laughs> FYI, y'all didn't. <laughs> Jeff did. <laughs> Look, it's just my taste in it. You do you, boo. I know there's a lot of people who like it. I'm, you are not one of them. The, you're not wrong. I'm just, I, I'm just not a fan. So here's wrong. here's the thing. If I remember correctly, I think I described eating Cap'n Crunch as like like as a cautionary thing because it chews up the inside of your mouth. Yes. Like that mm. it's so sharp and jagged. So I think that combined with what I think that Jeff had said, perhaps two out of three of us, the majority of the hosts, <laughs> kind of bagged on Cap'n Crunch a little bit. So, yeah. so. fair. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Not necessarily and, and, and again, fair. there's nothing wrong with somebody that were puffed rice. And peanut butter cap and crunch mixed together with like a chocolate drizzle over the top. It was, it was, it was ridiculous because it was, there was nothing healthy about it. <laughs> wow. Well, like so rice cookie treats aren't really healthy either. So this is basically marshmallows and, and, and rice krispies. Rice krispies. Yeah. I don't know how healthy rice krispies they are on themselves, but anyways, moving on. Yeah. Uh, over, over in the Twitterverse, we have uh, Filiberto Anasensi, uh, German 12496384, uh, pianist uh, 601. By the way, a side note, just funny, funny thing, uh, which I remind you of because of the pianist. We did uh, a, uh, what was it, 45 minutes Broadway? It's like a short version of 
goodbye regards to Broadway, I think. Um, and in it, we say pianist, but because we were in middle school when when we were doing it, we were mm-hmm. like all the middle school middle school middle school students. If they saw and they heard the word pianist, what would they do? Pianist. <laughs> Giggle, right? Yeah. So we intentionally changed it to piano player, which is the same thing. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> side note. Nice. And last but not least, we have Steve Summers XXX. Oh. Yeah. Where have I heard that name before? Um, anyway. And, and I'm going to quickly uh, do something. I have not heard this, uh, but I'm going to slightly do this out of order. But we did get a voicemail. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Hey guys, uh, this is Steve Summers. Um, I just wanted to thank you for the shout out on um, Cubs Out Loud. I am still alive. Um, <laughs> I did do three uh, films for Bear Films uh, in November uh, that actually are out. Um, but I just appreciate the shout out for, um, I can't believe I'm going to be 59 this year. Um, but I'm glad, uh, Damon, that you enjoy my work. And um, uh, you really get what I try to do. Um, my whole philosophy is if I'm not having a good time, then you're not having a good time. So I, I insist that uh, whenever I work. So I'm glad that that comes through the camera. Um, anyway, uh, love you guys, and thanks so much. Uh, and uh, take care. Bye-bye. Speaking of which, you sent us an email as well. Yay! Um, Damon, would you like to read the email? <laughs> uh, oh dear god wait a minute where is it okay sure thank you <laughs> bitch <laughs> <laughs> I've got multiple things going on here anyway um, the email was from May 1st at 1.21am and it says hey Damon thanks for the shout out I'm doing less porn but did three recently for Bell Fair, Bear Films this past November. I can't believe that I will... Kind of basically what he said during the... Yay! <laughs> wow. So... Hey, can you see let... why that email wasn't there a moment ago? <laughs> <laughs> because before David joined, his co-host had a discussion about the shock and awe factor that <laughs> we discussed Steve, Steve Sobers last week. And thank you, uh, Mr. Steve, for calling in and sending us the email and following us on Twitter. Like, it was... So, uh, to, to give you some insight, this morning I woke up, um, and I'm just, like, you know, scrolling and looking through things, and I have an email forward of the stuff that we get, and I see this email <laughs> from Mr. Steve, and I was like... <gasps> I was like, oh, my God, he emailed us. Like, that's so cool. David's going to lose his shit. Then I'm, like, preparing the doc and going through the stuff. And I'm like, oh, we got a voicemail. And then I listened to it. And I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) So before you came on, David, I was like, Jeff, I don't think David knows about the email or the voicemail. I was like, so we were trying to figure out how to surprise you with it. And and the the first thing I, I thought was, of course, he doesn't know about either of those. He hasn't even looked at the doc yet. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Can, can, and can, then, can, then we were like, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I, I'm not throwing shade. No, it's I, I'm spilling the tea. Right. Like, um, so, so I'm like, and then he mentioned what it was, and I'm like, oh, we need a right, spoiler on this. <laughs> what I said before you joined, David, I told Jeff, I was like, hey, the voicemail audio file is located here on the drive, and he was like, okay, and that I realized as we were talking, like he didn't listen to it. And I was like, okay, just so you know, the voicemail is from the same person who sent the email. So like, yeah. Yeah. Which is also the reason why I did that order, which it actually ended up being kind of uh, what he sent in the email. (laughs) He also loved that. Then he he goes, that's nice, honey. Oh, and he said, (laughs) oh, and FYI, just so you where he shared our, um, um, so on his Twitter page. Oh, how nice. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Steve. That like that honestly just tickles me to no end. I have the smile on my face I can't wipe off because I was so like 
That's why now, David, you understand in the pre-show, we were Jeff and I were on this whole like, well, we got to get the audio to work. Ha 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 ha. Because the voicemail was important. Yes. As all our voicemails are. So if you are interested, please leave us a voicemail at 361 yuck. Thank you. It's 361-265-8255. Ha ha ha. There you go. Well, why do I have that memorized? Because I say it every week. Anyways. You've only been saying it for like 15 years or something. (laughs) Well, there's that. Cool. Awesome. I am. Mm -mm. So, David, are there any other... Uh, like aging adult entertainers that you want to tag possibly and they're like somehow going to find out about the show and then they'll call in I guess because that oh. was pretty cool. Steve Ellis, Rusty McMahon. I don't know. Wow. I can't think Steve anything. Ellis, I could probably just I could probably just share the you know, that might be something I do. Huh. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. And so, okay, so for yeah, clarity gonna... to, to the, our audience and to our patrons, we didn't reach out to Mr. Steve, like, or some type of, like, thing that, like, kind of un- un- alerts him when he's tagged or mentioned or something. That's the only thing yeah. I could think of um, that would have put this so quickly on his radar that he immediately uh, happened to call in within just days. And it happened to be literally this morning, like, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Show. So, yeah. Very cool. So cool. Yay. Very Thanks. Cool. And folks, uh, it is that time in the month. It is the first of May, which also means that it is time for patrons to pay up. But we thank those people for doing what they do. Right, Damon and Gary? Yes. Yeah, so um, we want to give uh, Big Bear Cub hugs to our patrons and recognize them. Uh, we want to thank Charles W., who's at the Cubster level, our Ubers, Dave T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S., and our buddies, Lloyd G. Michael V. and Zach B. Uh, for following us and being supporters on Patreon. And um, I don't have it on the dock, but uh, y'all should have gotten email notifications today that uh, the rewards are going to be coming out. I know they're delayed. My apologies. But um, so some stuff's going to be coming in the mail soon. And if you are on a higher tier and you have a T-shirt coming to you, I'm super excited because we have a special patron only a specific design that's coming out oh. um, and you should be seeing it soon this month. Um, we were discussing in the pre-show that we might release it as a general um, thing, but we have to make a modification to the design uh, to make it for the general group. But And then we also have a separate new design that actually we discussed a long time ago that we're looking to bring out this month. So be on the lookout for be that. On the lookout. New merch. Yep, yep, yep. New merch. So thanks to our patrons for supporting us. We very much appreciate it. Very Where can you much. find merch? Uh, you can go to yeah. Gary. Uh, speaking of the past month uh, that we have have been talking about, uh, what were what 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 were the shows like last month? Uh, well, six forty two. We did a what's going on, and we talked about what happened in the month of March. And then uh, episode 643, we did a throwback. Uh, We did a Let's Talk About Food series where we discussed childhood cereals. Um, As you heard from Owen's feedback, uh, we had opinions about the cereals of our childhood. Some are long lost and never to be seen again. And others we have nostalgia about. And some of them, if I recall correctly, we scrutinized because we think they changed their recipes. So, um, but that was kind of a fun episode. And then uh, Mr. Ed, sorry, Dr. Ed. Edward Angelini Cook, <laughs> our Get that title right, COL <laughs> sex therapist, joined us this month for another episode in the series Landscape of Relationships. We talked about intimacy and arousal. Before we got into that, we celebrated Edward getting his doctoral thesis completed, submitted, uh, defended. He is official. He is a PhD. We are He's a so doctor. proud of him. So we have two doctors in the house now, Dr. Cisco and Dr. Edward. Yes. If we keep this going, we'll be like Thanos with the gauntlet and we'll we'll get a whole festival. We'll get like a nice spot, six of them. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five. There's a five. I don't remember. Anyways, moving on. 
And then we have one last show. Two, for lack of a better way to say it, um, are also aging. And, you know, and it wasn't so much a where are they now, but more just uh, how do we feel about that? And like, and are they still kind of in a time capsule of when we saw them or see them still the, to this day in video clips um, or whatever? Uh, so it was an interesting discussion, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So that was this past month. Excellent. And now it's that time. That time, gentlemen, time to tweet. Oh, I need to cut that off before we get a copyright claim. <laughs> Too late. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I can't help myself uh, every time I see a very uh, adorable picture by the same person uh i just can't help but share it uh it is ye old fiery biscuits just got off work his feet hurt he was going to take a shower before he flopped on the couch eat some pizza and maybe play video games and of course he shows his disrobing mm-hmm. he's so adorable he is i'm Dying for this beard. Like, big old. Yeah, big old fluffy beard and the curly hair and the furry, like everything else. <laughs> yeah, for Andy. Definitely. <sighs> but it's cute. Oh, it's as simple as that. So adorable. Mm mm mm. Damon? Um, so I have a couple, but it's from the same person. Um, this is from our one of my favorites, um, Skin and Earth. Um, and it's essentially two different angles of similar pictures. I'm sure it's just two separate pictures, but um, it was it's Skin and Earth and um, BJ Cub 10 doing um, some naughty bits in... Mm. Um, um, in a outside, mm. yeah. So there's the so the first picture, um, which I called angle one, is like facing uh, Mr. Skin and Earth with BJ Cub giving him a wonderful little job on his knees, and you get to see like all of BJ's um, backside. Um, he's wearing a nice jock and all that stuff, and then the second one. Um, kind of a different, like a slightly different angle. Uh, we're getting a more profile, um, you know, view, and we get to see um, Skin and Earth uh, getting the blowjob from BJ Cub, and we get to see all the 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 the, the peen, but not all of it. Some of it's down BJ's throat. So mm. there's that. <laughs> Gary, you all right? <laughs> Child. No, I only saw angle number one. I never saw angle number two. Yeah, so I two. literally saw that. Oh, it just was permitted on two couple days ago. Right. So angle number one, I was like, oh, that's cute. And I think I liked it. I don't even know if I reshared it, but I was like, that's cute. Like, and I and like I know of both of them. I've briefly met Skin and Earth years ago. Um, very charming uh person. God, and yes. I doesn't really show you what's happening. It's it's presumed true, but it it could be a posed shot. So and there is nothing wrong with looking at BJ's rear end. Let me just say, yeah, it's true, true, because he's beautiful. But this profile, <laughs> yes, you okay. I'm fine. I will be <laughs> fine after we finish recording and I'm in bed. <laughs> wow. Because this, I mean, this, yes, this photo is hot. It is, it is, it is also oh. a little bit more on the explicit side, but damn, 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 damn. Uh- damn, damn, damn. Right. The person who does their pictures, semi charm, who took the pictures, semi charm cub. Not bad looking at himself either. Oh no, no, no! I agree. I just started following because of this photo. I was like, "Who? Did, who? This photographer?" Um, 
and follow you. Well, that's a yes. that's a pretty picture. No, it, okay. uh, Ooh, sorry. I think it's been a while since I've seen an explicit sex photo on Twitter in some time, I guess. It's really mm. what it comes down to. Mm. Yes. Well, now that so. people are getting able to get back together in person. Also true. true. Well, very true. Like as a side reference, um, I just had new headshots done. Um which Damon, a bunch of people reached out to me and were like, This is a good picture of you. And I was like, Thank you. Yeah. Shutter, aka Chester, um, our former co-host, uh, took the pictures. I reached out to him about a month ago and was like, Hey, I really need to get new headshots. Like I need them for work, I need them for other things, because the last photo set that he took was back in twenty seventeen. <clears throat> <Yeah. laughs> like, almost it's been a while. Yeah, it's, it's been, been uh, four almost four years and four and a half years. So I was like, I am due for some events, provided they're not busy working the mm. event already. So, but I recommend, so yeah, I was uh, happy that I got that done. So nice. I've been slowly nice. updating some of my <laughs> images on things, you know, cause <laughs> my face is not the same. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Uh, for my Twitter selections, uh, the first one is called hack dat. So, <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm glad that you're laughing, David. Like I thought this was one of the funniest things I've seen in a while on, on the internet. <laughs> it's a it's a comic. It's a four it's a four square like kind of spot comic. It's a very simplistically <laughs> black and white, but it just cracks <laughs> my ass up. <laughs> so it's got two characters in it, and the one of them does all the talking. Um and they're wearing these sunglasses. <laughs> and if you don't pay attention to what's going on in the first one, all you read is it says, I'm going to hack that ass. And then and they're standing behind somebody who's bent over. And then in the second one, they got their um, rear end and the booty hole uh, showing. But the person who's talking is poking at the butt and saying, beep, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> and then in the third one, they enter them from behind and it goes shook. and then <laughs> in the fourth panel the one wearing the glasses says I'm in. <laughs> I love it. It's so stupid but it's so funny. Like, it's yeah. Just, it, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. This is, you know, not necessarily, you know, all that. Now to be fair, he does have a, a really nice muscular build on him but he is a big boy that weighs a bunch just mm-hmm. on the scale like i'm going to say he's at least 280 to 300 is going to be my guess mm-hmm. um he looks... got some thick thighs yes queen <laughs> <laughs> but i just love the fact that he just casually walks up and just starts doing a little pole dance routine and i'm like damn <laughs> so i love it and it's uh been viewed over twenty thousand times so Please feel free to view it some more and some more and some more. Um, yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite responses is, bruh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. So I, that was my second one. I was like, oh, I got to share that because I just think that's awesome. Like celebrate, you know, the positivity and the, the possibilities. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. There moving on moving to the links um so final fantasy 14 um launched their uh started their 24 man raids uh for in walker and they put out a okay. fact uh mm-hmm. this is the the one that i'm linking here is a uh lyric video uh that somebody made uh which show showed the lyrics uh it does have reference to Naldal is the kind of the patron deity of the city state of Ulda in the um in the game. Uh so there is a lot of reference to Naldal in that. And the song has a lot of reference to the region that Ulda is in, which is kind of a, a desert area and how their kind of culture is around prophet like not necessarily along the lines of like a Ferengi but um there's a lot of rich and a lot of poor and um but 
it's all about everybody's prosperity and, and money and stuff. Nalthal is considered the is uh, subtitled as the traders, the T R A D E R S, um, uh, of the twelve, the gods of um, Eorzea, in the game. Um, so the the thematic tone of the entire thing um, is just brilliantly writ written, brilliantly sang. It's it's wonderful. It's one of my favorites. In addition, I have an additional video where uh, what's his name? I keep forgetting. It's um uh, I add that added that in to get a little bit of an analysis in regards to it. It's pretty cool. And uh, I even found on YouTube somebody actually put an hour long looped version of this song. And that has uh, ended up being a uh, thing that I just kind of pull up on my phone when I'm uh, taking a break at work. <laughs> it's just very enjoyable. Cool. That's my, that's my link. Um, for my links th for this month, uh, for Netflix, uh, if you haven't already seen it or might be interested, I recommend Russian Doll Season 2. Um, Natasha Lyonne uh, created this kind of mind-bending first season. Um, the essence is that her character keeps reliving her last day of her life. Um it's sort of a Groundhog Day, but not really, and it's different because she, in the first season, is trying to not die, and she keeps dying. <laughs> it's kind of, like, messy, but there's a whole, like, concept behind it and a discovery um, of what it all means. So I was intrigued that it got greenlit for a second season and that it did come out. Now, this season goes in a different direction, and this is more about trying to change your personal history to affect your current quote unquote future. I don't really want to give away too much. There's some things that haven't been discussed or explained yet. Continue. There is no word that there's going to be any more seasons. So this could be a standalone, which is a little intriguing. Um, so the thing that they have been handling from my understand decently is, um, uh, I'm going to screw it up when I want to talk about it. So I think it's called DID. Um, Dissociative Identity Disorder, which is a mental health condition, which the main character has. And so they talk about it. Um, well, they they exemplify it. It's kind of hard to explain. If you watch it, you'll I think you'll have an understanding of it. Um, in the first episode or two, my understanding is that there was some criticism about how it was being handled. But I've also come to the understanding that they did have professionals involved in the entire process to make sure that they tried to authentically show what DID is like. Um, and so that's a very interesting perspective about a superhero. Um, so, yeah, that's all I want to say about that. So I, I recommend people check it out. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I've just been Same a, here. occupied with other things. I haven't watched anything. Yeah, I have so been. Long. I just started. So, Gary, you'll appreciate this. Um, this weekend, Jim and I started watching Is It Cake? Oh, good Lord, child. That show, I meant it to be like, mm. and then they, they bring the celebrities on, yeah, for like the final round thing, like to judge to determine if they can tell the difference between the real stuff versus the cakes. Anyways, you have to watch it. It's like I'm like, oh okay, like, and what's really unfortunate is, um, you know, this whole Netflix shakeup with their loss of value and um, subscribers and cancellation of shows. Um, mm. There's been a lot of criticism about like, how are you going to green light shit and then just back out of it? Like apparently mm. there were shows like in process, um, possibly mm. in production that Netflix pulled the plug on because they're, you know, trying to figure out what to do about the fact that they're losing market share. 
And there's a part of me that's like, well, baby, it was bound to happen. Like it always happens. The, yeah. pan- the pandemic, for the most part, is is coming. We're on the backside of it now. Most people are going out and doing things, so they're not trapped at home where they have more ability to stream. And you have com- competition. Yeah. Like Disney Plus is kicking a lot of people's ass right now. So I mean, you, you just had Hulu for a while there, but and eventually yeah. it was going to when with fragmentation of the ott space they things are going to get more competitive and you well just and, and i mean game. i've seen a ton of promoting about the discovery plus program so what they're doing is pulling a bunch of those programs through the discovery various networks together and making them a streaming thing you know we've got paramount plus mm-hmm. um you know and and so and my thing is like i only have netflix subscribing to these things yeah um like i have considered dropping because we've been doing sling for a long time um and i've considered dropping them and going to like youtube tv or something along those lines youtube tv youtube tv is more i'm sure hey Um, cable tv.com even recommends it it's also more expensive um and that's kind of where we're at. But that's if you want to watch heads. live TV. But if, you, if well, you're looking for, for like pre-recorded content, you could easily get that from like Hulu or, or the, or Paramount Plus or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I just added up my three streaming stuff for an entire year. When I divide them out, I'm roughly paying 30 bucks a month. That's still cheaper than cable. Right, it is, but that's also because I'm being a little hawkish and I'm not adding things like Discovery Plus. I'm not adding mm-hmm. Hulu back. I used to pay for Hulu for years and then I realized I don't fucking watch it, so I'm not paying yeah. for it anymore. I was um, paying for Hulu because I had a two, like I got a special like $2 or $3 um, rate some year or two ago and it ended. It was ending and I had realized, yeah, I got it. I haven't watched it mm-hmm. in like months. And some of the stuff that I was thinking I could watch on there, I ended up watching on, um, I can find that found out I could watch it on like Paramount or um, Netflix. There's a lots of different Disney. services. Just finding the right service that works for you. Oh. Or, Cause you can, I believe you can break yes. that down now. Yeah. Like I, like I have no interest in paying for, the extra things or whatever that's kind of like with apple like you get a new device like i upgraded my iphone recently and they're like oh you get apple tv free for like three or six months or whatever um which is all fine and dandy but it's like i put the mar- i put the reminder on my calendar and cancel that shit i'm like no i'm not like and i hate to say it um Disney Plus and Paramount Plus are the only two that are keeping me tuned in. Like, there's always something on there week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter that is, like, getting my eyeball attention. The other platforms? Not so much. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, those are my, those are my picks for this month. Yeah. Anyway, that. Uh, I believe that's it. <sighs> Shit. Play ways to contact us, uh, just like Steve Summers. Uh, uh, contact us like a porn star. <laughs> uh, you can do that by going to our blog at cubsoutloud.com and leaving a comment there. You can also shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-265-8255. That's 361-COL-TALK. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. If you would like to chat with us, you can do that in our entourage chat at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col uh we call it the entourage just because one day i just like was like oh what do you call our listeners and i was like the entourage and i'm it just catches a joke from a long long time ago which we haven't referenced in a long long time i'm sure <laughs> also designed by a smashy mug uh a soup bowl i got a mug too um uh, i got two different types of mugs Plenty of other things you can do that over in Zazzle at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud or Zazzle dot insert your company or country code uh, there as slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, those 
shirts that are designed by Smashy. You can get more of this stuff over at tpublic at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron. Uh, we love our patrons. You can do that over at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, or if you want to send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us any podcast directory that you could that you're aware of, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other. You can subscribe to me on Twitch as at Windgem, W Y N D G E M, uh, where I sometimes stream Final Fantasy XIV, but uh, try to uh, stream Bears and Dragons, but we've had conflicts the past couple of weeks, so I apologize about that. But we'll hopefully be back this next Thursday. Mm hmm. Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B. Um, on most beer related sites on Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can. <laughs>